Welcome to Lemons.com in a lab video series on Cisco 9800 wireless line controller. This is Metha, your instructor for this video series. For a complete list of the 9800 controller videos, you can visit our website under the wireless section. There you can also sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. This is our first configuration video in this video series, and we are going to start by going through a 9800 private cloud controller installation and that's going to be on the VMware ESXi. Like I mentioned in the previous video with the introduction of the controller, the cloud version of the 9800 controller has almost the same features as the physical appliances. So this gives you actually a great way to start learning and also build your own lab, right? If you just start to get into the iOS XE controller here. If you're dealing with the physical appliances, you're probably still going to want to watch this video anyway, as we are going to be doing controller initialization, which is very much applicable across all the control platforms. The ARS videos that we have for the counterparts for this video is the WL0001, the Virtual Controller 7.3 VMware installation, as well as the WL0003, and that is the Wise Line Controller basic installation. So like I mentioned in the past video, right, I'm going to try to point you back to something we did similar to this when it was the ARS. So that way you guys can do a comparison yourself. All right, with that said, let's get started with this video. For our lab setup, we have a Windows 2019, which is our domain controller, DNS server, as well as a certificate authority server that we use in the future video. And that's sitting on the VLAN 32, our server VLAN, and the subnet 172.16.32.0 slash 24. Our domain controller is the IP of dot 40. On this same VLAN, we're going to be installing a cloud wireless LAN controller, right, lm plc one right here, running off an ESXi server that we have. As far as connectivity, I guess we can also come back and reference this, but as you can see, the Gig1 interface is going to be a dedicated management out of band, right, which connects to VLAN 99, and that's going to have the IP 172.16.99.104. While the Gig2 and 3, we're going to reserve that to use as a data trunk. Also, right next step, we have a wireless access point, LM-AP1, although it's completely unconfigured, uh, sitting there, has been reset to a factory default that's connected to the port 9 on the switch. On the right hand side we have another server VLAN, VLAN 33 with the subnet 33.0 slash 24. You'll see in a second that we can already have the second controller installed, the BLC2, and we're going to use that to go through a command line initialization. The only difference as far as the setup goes between the controller 1 and 2 is that the controller 2 we're going to try to use the data trunk for our management interface, so it'll be somewhat, oh, I wouldn't say inline because it's still going to be connected to the VLAN 99, right, with the IPF.105, right, but I guess it will become a little clearer when we get into the initialization part and see how this will be set up, right, but the controller 2 would not have a dedicated interface, I guess, uh, at least physically separated anyway, right, from the data, like the controller 1 does. And same deal, on that same VLAN 33, we have another access point connect to port 10 and the switch. And in the middle of all this, we've got our core switch, switch one, which has a loopback IP of 1.16.0.1. All right, all the SVIs are on this guy, the dot one of the 32 VLAN, 33 VLAN, as well as the out of band 99 VLAN. And it also has a connection to the internet. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is to get the installation started for our LMWLC one. As a prerequisite, you should already have an ESXi server running server version 5.5 or newer with sufficient hardware resources. And you'll get to see in a little bit when we step through the configuration what that resource requirement looks like for the different size deployment. Then you should have also downloaded your desired 9800CL ESXi OVA from a Cisco.com website. And finally, make sure that your environment has a working DNS server, as well as the internet access for licensing. Now I'm going to jump into our Windows 2019 here. We use that as our RDP jump box to access our labs. Let me bring up the RDP session. 